All right then guys, welcome to the video. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be installing a new inlet manifold on my Honda Civic Type R EP3. I've had loads of comments about this and it was as if you guys didn't think I'd already planned to do this. I've had this thing sat in the box for ages. I'll be honest, I'm not totally looking forward to installing this because I've seen that it's a bit of a mission. But anyway, I've got the Skunk 2 Ultra in black and it looked so good. I can't wait to get this on with the Mugen rocker cover, it's gonna look so good. But basically there's some trimming that needs to happen and all of that. So what I'm aiming for this video to be is your one-stop shop for installing one of these because when I was researching this, I found it kind of hard to find all the information out. So I'm hoping that throughout this video, you'll be able to know all the things you need to know to install this thing. So let's get into it. Let's start taking some bits off so we can get into taking the old inlet off and sticking this new one on. So first things first is I'm gonna take off this cover and I guess this is the last time this cover will be on the engine because it won't fit with the Skunk 2 manifold. I am also gonna be using the standard throttle body. I don't need a bigger one because I've been told by multiple people that it only really matters if you're gonna go boosted or whatever in the future, which I'm not planning on doing with this car. So I'm hoping that means we run into less fitment issues, but we'll see. I've got the cover off. I've also taken off my grill and everything because I'm gonna need to get to this bit later on. So next step is gonna be, you're gonna remove the battery because I'm undoing the earth for the fuel rail, all of that sort of stuff. And then we'll get the intake hose off and go from there really. So we've taken the air box completely out. Now we're gonna remove this hose. This is something you need to extend anyway. So this has got to come off, gonna detach this and then take the fuel rail off. Moving those out of the way means it's easier to do that. Okay, so we got the fuel rail out. You need to put some paper towel down to catch the fuel because it will leak out of here. I've done a full video on a fuel rail install, so if you need more detail on that, then go check that video out. So I am gonna do the throttle body because I couldn't really find much info on this. So I'm hoping if I just take the throttle body off that it will just come away as one. So I've cracked most of the bolts already. There's all a 12 mil. So you've got these two that are these stud bolts and the other two just seem to be nuts that screw onto a thread. So I'm hoping this should just slide off now, but I could be wrong. So gave me a tap and like freed off the gasket and now this should slide off. So this is one of the studs that was in the inlet manifold. So this end was in the inlet. This was the bit that was holding on the throttle body. So we basically did the double nut method with the nuts that we took off to undo this to get this out because by the looks of it, you do need this in the Skunk 2 one. It was actually not in too tight at all. So gonna get the other one out now anyway. So this took an absolute age to get off, but I just slowly wiggled it off with a screwdriver and it eventually went. So now it's time to move on to unbolting the manifold. And yeah, got a long extension on here. I wanna keep this as straight as possible because these are very awkward to get to but there's also these two studs here into the engine that you also need to remove because if you don't remove those, you have a problem with it clearing here. So taking those out makes this job a lot easier. So the idea is, yeah, I'm gonna start by taking these off. One there, one there, one through there. I've got one bolt through under here and there's another one down under there as well. Okay, so some time has passed and I just wanted to break down how we've managed to undo all the bolts. There's like a mismatch of loads of different things. So they're all 12 mil by the way. The top four would recommend doing with a spanner. We did manage to crack this one without a spanner, but then realize a spanner would be easier. So take these brackets off, you can see this one's gone. Take these off, that's just a 10 mil holding those on. You're not gonna use them again anyway. From there, it got kind of complicated. <laughs> so to crack this one, we ended up using this tool here, which uses a 16 mil spanner, and then you can put a socket on it. So we were basically in there like that. For the one in the middle, this one was very difficult. So we ended up using this with a flexi head on it in there to crack it and then because of the crazy angle on it we then used this long extension with the wobble head on the end to be able to just undo it and pull it out and then this one on this end is still in there as you can see because i didn't know another way to actually show you where this one is if you can figure out another way to do it then cool but that's the best way we managed to do it anyway so getting these studs out we've unbolted the bolt flipped it over and then bolted it back on and then bolted another one on that is actually the one from the throttle body because they're the same size to create the lock together so that that we can actually get this thing out. So basically now it's just a case of getting it out of the block 
Right, so we're now basically at the point of taking this out. This stud is the only thing holding this in, and that is because I forgot to mention earlier, there's also a bracket down under here that you can only get to from under the car. So earlier on today, we jacked the car up and unbolted it. It's basically like a support brace for the inlet manifold. So yeah, once you've undone that and also this, in theory, this is now basically a couple threads away from us being able to lift this thing out. And we're away. So that's the bracket I was talking about. So that bolt there, you need to undo that. Now that the inlet manifold is out, we actually need this gasket because the gasket that comes with the Skunk 2 inlet covers part of the injector hole. So I need to use this as a template to then cut out where it's overlapping basically. And I've plugged the holes with some, some rags and stuff just so nothing can get in because that would be bad if that happened. So the next step is to line this up with a thermal gasket and mark it up so that we can trim that one to the right size. So here's the plan, put these studs in and screw them in so it doesn't move around as much then put all these in just so it's definitely lined up as best it can as you can see it is way out all of them are miles out so that's the bit that we're going to be trimming out how about this is a little throwback i've never used this thing woolworth's workshop how nuts is that there you go there's a close-up to show how far out it is so yeah definitely check yours if you get one of these or there are some others you can buy off the shelf if you want to just not bother with this stage all right here we go never done this before so hopefully nothing goes wrong well, you get the idea, guys, so I'm basically going to do this until it's all sorted. So, guys, this has been trimmed up now, fits way better. It took about 20-ish minutes or so to get the shape right. With that tool, anyway, it might be better with a slightly more aggressive bit on it that can attack it a bit better but deburred it all with a razor blade and everything so this is basically ready to go i just can't believe that it ships with something that's so far out we've taped up the this face here and around here because we've been test fitting this into the car to see where it's going to hit and stuff because you either have to do some trimming or what we've been looking at is it actually looks like you can get away with instead of cutting it it looks like you might be able to just hammer back sections and then it clear that way so we're going to start by trying that method first because we've had it in the car and it does look like it doesn't need loads of adjustments we tried it without the gasket to start with just because we knew that would give us an extra whatever this is three four mil of clearance so basically yeah next thing is going to be figuring out actually knocking back that t-piece so there's this t-piece here that basically holds in the it's sort of like a fan shroud support this is the piece where when you install the inlet manifold this is what it hits so conveniently I got this cut one pre-cut already. I'm not actually gonna use this. I've got this to do test fitting with and just to show you guys. This came off a car with a Skunk 2 inlet on it already. So I could, if I wanted to, just install this, but it's a little bit rusty or more rusty than mine anyway. So I'm not gonna use this one. Here on my piece isn't, this is all like metal here. So this one's been fully cut out and it's been trimmed up here. From what we're looking at, I don't think it needs to be this much of a cut or anything, or even a cut at all. So we're looking to hammer in this bit here. So there's the latch here so it sits in the car like that so yeah we're looking to hammer in this bit here and i'm hoping that that is then enough that we don't actually have to cut anything out or anything i suppose worst case scenario is i could use this but this was more for demonstrative and mocking up purposes if you're looking to get this out there's a bolt on the bottom which we also got out when we took out the bolt for the mount for the inlet manifold i did this one as well it's just literally right at the bottom of the car it's actually so obvious that you would almost miss it and then it's like four bolts on top and this thing should sort of move around and make it easier to get the inlet manifold in. We're going to get on with hammering this one into the right sort of placement. Hopefully that's all we need to do to be able to install the inlet back in. Tomorrow. Okay guys, so it's actually the next day. It's been some time and as you can see, you might be able to see from there, we've got the inlet manifold mocked up in here right now and we have this panel in. That's because we've just spent the last hour, hour and a half ish to hammer back this panel so that we can actually fit in this manifold with this piece. What I'll do is I'll show you how we hammer it back and then I'll also show you the other one that's been cut so unbolted the four bolts that hold in on the top there's the one on the bottom that I mentioned earlier then there's all the little clips that are holding in the wiring harness behind here as well unclipped all of those because that gives you way more movement and basically what should happen is this should be able to lift out quite far we've left the cable for the bonnet release attached because I don't want to be messing around with trying to get that back on or anything like that so the way that we did this was we used a hammer on the back side of this and then used the ball side of this hammer 
to hammer in the edge there. I'll show you guys in a sec the close-up of this so I can explain it a bit more, but basically that's the methodology of knocking this back. From our calculations and with it all fitting back, it looks like it's gonna fit because we've also hammered it to the point where I was trying to compensate for engine movement as well. So in theory, we've hammered it back enough. If you do wanna do this method, it is possible. But yeah, I'll show you close-ups of this and I'll also show you close-ups of the other piece so you can decide whether you wanna cut it or not. So as you can see here, it's been dented back basically this whole piece. If you look at your standard one, you'll be able to see that this sort of runs all the way up. We've knocked it back on both sides because it was hitting on both sides. You can see I've still got this taped up. So this bit here is hitting where the stud that mounts into the inlet manifold to allow the throttle body to meet up. That's where that is hitting. So we've bent this back here as well. So there's clearance there and there's also plenty of clearance here now. This slides in. We haven't totally started putting it back together yet, but as you can see, that fits back in there like that. And in this gap, there's enough space in there to be able to have a little bit of movement. So I thought I'd give you a close up with a ruler in there just so you can see the measurements. As you can see, we've kind of dented in 90 mil down. It's kind of hard to say how far back it's gone. You've just got to keep knocking it back until it fits how you want it to fit. So that's how far down you would need to go if you're going to hammer it back. Also, you can see here, sort of the red marker is where we marked the area that it was hitting. And then you can see also where it was hitting below that. That's why I put the tape on, because I just didn't want to scratch the manifold while test fitting it all and everything. So if you're not interested about hammering it and spending the time doing that, and you just want to cut it, this is a pre-cut one. So you can see here, it's about a 170 mil cut across there. This is pretty extreme, by the way. You probably don't need to cut it this much, but for the sake of this, it makes sense. This gives you the clearance for the throttle body. And I'm assuming also, if you're running a bigger throttle body, this may also be useful and then this cut down here is well it's from across this line if that wasn't trimmed it is 85 so 90 mil same as what we did um, but as you can see there it's about 100 110 that full piece cut out there so that gives you an idea if you want to cut it instead that's your other option and i thought i would also show you this is how much we dented in here to be able to clear this section whilst it's all in so it's gone back this was flat and flush along here so that's how much we've dented it back basically hopefully that gives you a rough idea it's hard to say how far back that's gone it's sort of again another one of those trial and error things and this is the best shot I can sort of give you of the clearance that we now have. Sorry I can't get much more than that but it's really hard to get an angle on this. As you can see you should have enough movement up and down as well for the engine movement. Hopefully this is enough because at this point in time it is still a trial and error thing so hopefully this is alright. So now that we've got all of that sorted, the next piece is, as you can see here, the cabling and shroud is hitting the fan shroud. So ideally what we're gonna do is just cut a notch out of this to give it a bit of flex. There is movement, but I'm not looking for this to wear out over time. So if we just take the edging off of this and that should give more flexibility for this cable. And there we go, just trim this bit up so as you can see, just take it off, cut it with whatever you've got, junior hacksaw or whatever, we use an electric thing, but it doesn't really matter. It's still close to it, this sensor here is still close to it, but it gives us enough movement now where it's not constantly hitting something. The ridge on it was impeding just in here, which it's now not doing. So before it all goes back together, I'm going to untape this earth and move it slightly because basically what people usually do is just run it to this bolt here. I just don't think that looks that good, so what I'm actually going to do is unravel this tape here back a little bit so that I can actually manage to get it to as a bolt just here because that should give it a cleaner look and then tape it back up once it's actually been breached there. So I'm going to start by putting all of these clips that you can see here, putting all those back in all of the holes along here so that's all back together as one. Just putting the fittings on the bottom of the Skunk 2 manifold and just a word of warning because Skunk 2 is an American brand, all of these fittings are actually Imperial which we didn't really think about until now. So uh, you can get away with this. This is a 6mm Allen key. This is an 11mm socket and this is a 12mm. But this was really difficult. So it's sort of like a 4.5mm-ish size if you're not an Imperial. So we ended up having to make one with an angle grinder to make it fit. So yeah, just a word of warning. Make sure you've got those bits before you start because otherwise you can get caught out this stage. Also, I thought it was worth mentioning. So this hose is off the original inlet manifold and isn't long enough to fit to this. This is where I've decided to run it. I could also run it to there. So what I've done is, well, had a local place, had this bit lying around, so they managed to give it to me. But if you 
can't find somewhere like this. This hose has got a 10 millimeter internal diameter, so that's what you're looking for. I'll leave a link to some down below if you just want to buy that or if you can try and find it cheaper somewhere else or whatever, but it's been pre-bent and everything because it's off of another car, I'm not actually sure what, but I'm going to try and make this work by trimming it down to the right size, seeing what looks the best. It's time to put everything back to the final time. This feels weird because it feels like there should be something else that needs to happen, but from what I can work out, we are ready to put this thing back in. I've taped up the inlet manifold where the bolt goes in just so we don't scratch it at this stage just putting bolts in because it's still pretty awkward to get to this middle one okay so some time has passed and yeah it took us ages to get there's the, the bolt that goes in down under there absolute mission to get that in it took us two pairs of hands to get that one in so the inlet manifold is fully in right now and the throttle body is bolted up weirdly this top bolt here was slightly too long that could have been just the machining and gone through here with enough thread or the hole wasn't deep enough whatever so we trimmed up this bolt here so that fits now so that's fully bolted in i've plugged most of the stuff back in also replaced these bolts here because one I lost this one in there somewhere, I don't know where that's gone. You never see these, but I just thought I've got them, so I might as well use them. And then also this hose, I decided that I wasn't gonna cut this up. With the length that it is, it doesn't actually kink in anywhere. So I did measure it for you guys, just in case you were wondering how long it is. And I reckon you'll be safe if you get about 600 mil. So yeah, 60 centimeters of hose. So that's that 10 mil hose, 60 centimeters of that. And you should be sweet to be able to run it to either of the ports, whatever you decide. But yeah, I've run it to the one under here. So now we're sort of heading onto the fuel rail so let's head over to the bench and i'll show you that okay guys so as you can see in front of me load of little genuine honda bags pretty cool these are all the o-rings for your fuel injectors now i bought these when i changed my fuel rail so you can go check that video out if you want to know more about that but i ended up not changing them then because i knew this was going to happen and i was going to do this now so you can buy these as a kit i'll leave a link down below if you want to pick these up annoyingly you have to buy them per injector so it's 40 quid's worth of o-rings which is kind of annoying but it's genuine honda so oh well i've already done one of them this is the second one so i'm going to get on with doing this and then i'll do the others as well i just thought i'd show you that i am changing them. <laughs> Cool, so you get the idea, and yeah, I'm gonna do the other two now, and then we'll be ready to put it in the car. Cool, so the fuel rail back together. I've also put the grams fuel pressure gauge back in, and basically it's time to get this thing in the car. On the standard inlet manifold, these are actually studs that you then screw a nut down onto. And as you can see here, these aren't. So you're gonna need to get some screws. They're an eight mil thread. We've gone for a dome stainless steel bolt. Should look pretty nice. And then I've got a washer so it doesn't scratch. I had a washer and I've got a washer so that it doesn't scratch the fuel rail. Okay, so it is time to put the fuel rail in. And then you reuse the spaces that are from the OEM one. And boom, one step closer. So I just unbolted this bolt here and removed it so I could thread through the wiring for the injector plugs. But the only reason I could get it as neat as this looks right now is because of pulling back the cabling for the earth, which we have run down here. And that is now also attached in there. That is the cleanest way I can think of doing it without doing some sort of crazy rewiring or whatever. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks, but looks pretty minimalistic. Now that's done, I can hook it back up and then we can move on to the induction. So I saw a load of you guys in the comments saying, why don't you get a new hose for your induction kit? Don't worry, I've had this other one for a long time. And it turns out actually, as I took this one off, this one's actually split, so I would have had to have replaced it anyway. So this bit's off, I've taken the Jubilee clips off and I've taken the sensor out. Here we go, this is what we've got. So I've put a bolt in here and actually this bolt fits so perfectly that I haven't needed to put anything around this. It's like the ultimate size. Got the Jubilee clips on here, the sensor's here ready to be plugged in and this Jubilee clip here so let's see if this fits because I have a feeling this might be too long we might need to trim it but at this point I don't know so let's get this in the car I can see this being a bit of a battle so I'll get back to you guys once this is on so we managed to get the intake in but it's not mounted in fully yet I need to figure that out but what's more important is actually getting the car started and see if it actually runs so I'll sort that out another time I may have to order another bracket or something the other thing as well that's not connected currently is this hose here you can see this gap 
is all there is. So what we have is a tiny plastic extension piece that we're basically gonna snip this in half, place this in the middle, and that should give us the extension. It only seems to be about a 35 mil gap between where it used to be and where it is now. So this piece should, in theory, fix that problem. And there we go, there it is extended, so that's the only bit you see. It doesn't actually look too bad. May leave it, may get a full hose that is this size, because it may look a bit better, but I'm pretty happy with how that is for now anyway. So that's all connected. Hi hey guys, Future Trolley here. Sorry, I realized I didn't actually explain why I haven't just replaced this whole hose with a longer one, or why I'm using this piece specifically. For some reason, Honda designed this so that this end of the hose is actually wider than this end. So unless you're just gonna run a hose that is wider the entire length, and then maybe put some like Jubilee clip or something on this, and you have to cut this one up. This pipe in the middle is actually from a Land Rover Defender vacuum line, but I did measure it, and so you guys can find something. So it's basically just a plastic pipe. It's got a six millimeter outside diameter with a four millimeter inside diameter. The six mil basically means it's a nice tight fit inside this pipe. So if I can find something, I'll link it below, but I just thought I'd clear that up. So I guess it's now time to start peeling this stuff off. I'm hoping I haven't made it too hard on myself. Boom. This looks pretty cool. Okay, first of all, look how cool this looks. Obviously there's the paper there because I'm worried that this is gonna leak. Turns out I was lying. You can remove the studs from the OEM inlet manifold, but I prefer the look of this anyway. I think this looks a bit nicer, low profile. Basically now is the time to see whether we're gonna get any fuel leaks. This is exactly the same as my video when I installed this the first time. So we're just gonna prime it, which is turning it to ignition. So let's see what happens. Okay, we've got no leaks at the moment. We go off again and then we'll prime again. Okay guys, so it turned out I had a leak on the injector closest to the fuel pressure gauge, which made me think I could smell fuel and I didn't really understand why because I couldn't see the fuel coming out of the pressure gauge, which is what happened last time when I did this. But yeah, that's all sorted now. We've left it primed for a, at least five minutes and it's still holding pressure and there's no leaks. So we've sorted that problem. So now is the time for the first start and I, I don't know what's gonna happen. So here we go. <laughs> sounds like it's leaking air from somewhere the next day okay then guys so it's the next day and basically we had a couple of problems trying to figure out what was going on because as you heard in that last clip there was a pretty serious air leak we were trying to figure out where everything was from it took us a couple of hours because we thought things were loose they weren't because well i'll just show you so first issue that we had the major air leak so we were running about 2500 rpm was this was leaking air so we changed this to a jubilee clip because the clip that was originally on it just couldn't handle the angles i guess and, and the fitting is i think slightly smaller so ended up with a jubilee clip here that solved that problem but we still were running into an issue where we had an idle of about 2000 rpm i couldn't figure out why because everything we'd done up was tight everything nothing that we changed changed anything so that's what I didn't understand actually after i took it for a test drive i figured out what the problem was was when i'd accelerate the, the accelerator pedal felt sticky which i thought was a bit weird and it turns out this part here was hitting this side so this is the throttle body here this part of this mechanism here was hitting the side of the inlet manifold which meant that this wasn't going back to its full resting position which obviously meant we had an issue with the idle so we trimmed this off and it's now working perfectly but we literally spent two hours checking bolts everything because it should idle at the same as the standard inlet check the cable here because there should be some flex in it like this but mine was really loose i just thought i would show you guys how much of that piece we cut out this is all it is i don't think you need to cut this much off to be honest this is what i would class as overkill but we just wanted to make sure and the part still works perfectly fine okay so it's time to offer the grill and slam panel back in and we'll get a first look at how cool this is going to be. And the final piece of the puzzle is the badge. So let's get this thing on here. Just sticks on with double sided tape. In it goes like that. And then there's a protective layer on top. Boom. And there we go, guys. There we go. It's 
basically exactly how I thought it would turn out. The only thing now is to figure out a bracket for the Tegua induction kit because that's currently held down with cable ties so I'm able to actually drive the car. Hi guys, Future Ollie again. I just thought I'd share with you how I ended up mounting the Tegua induction kit because that bracket is too short and I still haven't mounted it that way. I haven't trimmed up the hose or anything but did sort of change the angles of it a little bit which made it sit a bit better and I've actually just used some of this double-sided velcro tape i've used about two centimeters of this stuff just in this corner just to hold it down a little bit i didn't want to fully tape up the whole thing because i still want some movement because this obviously moves with the engine and what have you there is flex in the hose as well just thought i'd share that with you because it's quite an easy way to mount this thing up and i heard that quite a few people have done this before anyway so i'll link this stuff below if you want to pick this up and yeah let's go on with the video everything is now done and buttoned up and i am so happy with how this turned out the black the red and how it all ties in with the whole engine bay it just looks amazing Okay guys, so basically I'll give you guys a start up. This will be a cold start because I haven't actually started it today and we'll see how it's sounding, how it's idling and everything. So yeah, currently on the cold start, so revs are a little bit high, but it's running exactly as it was with the standard inlet manifold on. So I'm super, super happy and I'm glad that we ironed out these problems. So yeah, just remember to check that bracket if you've got an issue. As you can see, it's running fine now, and I've been on a test drive with it like this last night, and it was fine. Hey guys, Feature Ollie again. Just thought I'd mention that it's been about two weeks since I've had this all installed. I've been driving it around like normal. I haven't been into VTEC because I don't want to risk anything higher up in the RPMs or what have you, but driving around normally feels basically the same as it did with the standard in that manifold. Just thought that was worth mentioning just in case you guys were worried that you couldn't drive this around afterwards, because that's something I was worried about. I've been driving it around normal. I've done quite a few miles as well. It seems to be handling it all right. A little bit boggy down low. So yeah, just keeping it safe. Anyway, let's get back to the video. There we go guys. Hopefully this video has been able to help you out and you are going to tackle something like this by yourself. There are companies that can do it for you if you don't feel like tackling something like this. I was quite lucky in the fact that none of the bolts to come off the car were hard to get off in any way. There is nothing left now. This is this is ready for a map. That's going to be the next thing and I'm very excited because like I've said plenty of times I've been waiting for this final iteration for a long long time. I will also leave a link to all the stuff I've used in this video down below and if you want you can use my discount code to save yourself some money on some this stuff as well hopefully you've enjoyed this one guys hopefully it's helped you out if you do have any questions do leave them down in the comment section below like the video subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one